हेलो एवरीवन दिस वीडियो इज अबाउट द रेस्पिरेटरी प्रैक्टिकल्स ऑफ ह्यूमन एक्सपेरिमेंट्स वी हैव ऑलरेडी मेड कार्डियोवस्कुलर सिस्टम एंड स्पेशल सेंसेस वीडियो ऑफ ह्यूमन एक्सपेरिमेंट एंड दिस इज द लास्ट वीडियो व्हिच विल कंप्लीट योर ह्यूमन एक्सपेरिमेंट्स ओके ओके सो स्टार्टिंग विद वाइटलोग्राफी व्हिच इज द मेजरमेंट ऑफ वाइटल कैपेसिटी विद द हेल्प ऑफ वाइटलोग्राफ दिस इमेज इज दैट ऑफ वाइटलोग्राफ as you can see the image this is a double wall cylinder okay this is inverted lightweight drum which is attached with a chain which uh, pull, which is basically uh, traversing over the pulley and basically attached with a weight which counter which is a counter weight of this drum fine there is a corrugated tube attached with the mouthpiece so as we expire into this forcefully so this drum will go upward and the pulley moves which will give us the amount of the volume of air we have expired this way we calculate vital capacity okay so what is vital capacity the viva questions we are talking about here so vital capacity is the maximum amount of air a person can expel from lungs after maximum inhalation so you have to inhale maximally from the environment close your nose and you have to expire into this apparatus that's the uh, mechanism right so uh, this way you can see in the graph so maximally inspire, inspire so after that when we forcefully maximally expire this is the amount which we call as vital capacity from here till here okay so you can be asked what are uh, the types uh, what are the parts of instrument and what is the procedure fine you can be asked what is calibration calibration is basically closing the mouthpiece you have to first of all you have to make at this level this drum and then you have to close it if this drum is not moving that means it's uh, don't have any uh, air leak okay so that is the calibration fine and, and the procedure part you can be asked and what is vital capacity is basically after maximally inspiration okay you have to forcefully expire the maximum expiration after maximal inspiration okay so that is vital capacity now let's see uh, what can be questions uh, in this practical so uh, you can be asked what are factor affecting vital capacity so physiological factors are vital capacity is less in old age uh, less in female uh, and uh, as per body surface area we are talking about here in lying down position it's less and in pregnancy because of the fetus pathological conditions are the respiratory obstruction conditions when the expiratory volume is decreased uh, the emphysema pleural effusion pneumothorax and ascites they can hamper vital capacity why vital capacity is more in standing position as this practical is also effect of posture on vital capacity so why vital capacity is more in standing position so the answer is on standing diaphragm descends occur first thing and second thing is because of standing venous pulling occur okay when we stand due to gravity venous pulling occur or hence which decreases the venous return okay so decreased uh, venous return and descends diaphragm both of these leads to increase in thoracic case volume and that's how we uh, can uh, take more uh, volume of air and that's how increases vital capacity okay then comes spirometry practical which uh, we measure lung volume and capacities okay so let's just uh, have a look on the lung volumes okay so lung volumes are separate but capacities are combination of different lung volumes let's see so first is tidal volume which is the volume of air inspired or expired during quiet breathing as you can see uh, small curves are there these all are tidal inspiration tidal expiration the normal volume is 500 ml then is inspiratory reserve volume maximum volume of air which can be inspired after tidal inspiration so after tidal inspiration from here till the maximal one so this is inspiratory reserve volume and combination of both inspiratory reserve volume and tidal volume give you inspiratory capacity fine then comes expiratory reserve volume which is the maximum volume of air which can be expired after tidal expiration as you can see this is the tidal expiration okay this one is the tidal expiration and from here till here is the expiratory reserve volume 
एंड अगेन एक्सपिरेटरी कैपेसिटीज एक्सपिरेटरी रिजर्व वॉल्यूम प्लस एक्सपिरेटरी और टाइडल एक्सपिरेशन राइट बोथ ऑफ दीज कॉम्बिनेशन इज एक्सपिरेटरी कैपेसिटी देन कम्स इज फंक्शनल रेजिडुअल वॉल्यूम विच इज द वॉल्यूम रिमेन्स आफ्टर नॉर्मल एक्सपिरेशन सो एज वी नॉर्मली एक्सपायर फॉर एग्जाम्पल दिस वन फोर्सफुली वी डिड एंड देन वी सो बेसिकली वेन वी नॉर्मली एक्सपायर एंड फ्रॉम हेयर टिल हेयर दिस इज द एक्सपिरेटरी रिजर्व वॉल्यूम विच वी कैन एक्सपायर इफ यू फोर्सफुली एक्सपायर नॉट नॉर्मली ओके बट वी आर नॉट डूइंग सो वेन वी नॉर्मली एक्सपायर सो दिस रिमेनिंग वॉल्यूम इन लंग इज एक्सपिरेटरी रिजर्व वॉल्यूम ओके एंड द वॉल्यूम विच रिमेन इवन आफ्टर द फोर्सफुल एक्सपिरेशन इज द रेजिडल वॉल्यूम ओके सो यू कैन सी द अमाउंट एंड वाइटल कैपेसिटी इज कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ टाइडल वॉल्यूम इंस्पिरेटरी रिजर्व वॉल्यूम एक्सपिरेटरी रिजर्व वॉल्यूम एज यू कैन सी हेयर द इंस्पिरेटरी रिजर्व वॉल्यूम दिस वन द टाइडल वॉल्यूम दिस वन एंड एक्सपिरेटरी रिजर्व वॉल्यूम दिस वन सो गिव यू वाइटल कैपेसिटी अराउंड फोर लीटर और फोर्टी सिक्स हंड्रेड एम एल दिस इज अ रेंज ओके then question is timed vital capacity or forced vital capacity what's that when we count time along with the vital capacity it's time bound it will be timed vital capacity so maximum volume of air which can be expired forcefully and rapidly here you can see rapidly word we are using so it's time bound after complete inspiration so how much rapid around 3 seconds we have to expire fully so how uh this way so this is this is the maximal inspiration as you can see then we hold breath and then we forcefully then the subject is asked to forcefully expire and rapidly within around 3 second or 4, 3 to 5 second it's a range and we have to just calculate that how much percentage in 1 second we have expired how much percentage in second second this way we calculate fev1 which is the volume of forced vital capacity expired in first second okay this is around 80% the normal value in second second it's around 95 second in third second it's around 98 to 100 second here mention this is first second and this is first two second this is first three second so total value this one is total value okay so this is fev1 then what is significance of this fev1 we can uh, assess whether it's obstructive or restrictive disease how in obstructive disease expiration is affected right the patient is not able to expire because of some obstruction right so expiration is affected so when uh, in that condition there will be decrease in fev1 as you can see here the volume is normal but uh, the it uh, the patient is not able to expire the slope you can see this is a very vertical slope and here this is very delayed slope so you can see this volume in 1 second is very less as compared to this one which was around 80% here it's around 50% so fev1 is decrease in obstructive disease vital capacity is normal and in restrictive disease vital capacity is decrease because patient is not able to inspire the volume it's not about expiration right because lungs are not able to expand properly so vital capacity is less fev1 is normal so differ this difference of fev1 can help you to distinguish between obstructive and restrictive disorders coming to next practical which is stethography which is the process of recording of respiratory movements okay principle is when we increase the volume when we inspire the volume of chest increases which leads to fall in pressure in this corrugated tube okay which lead to downward uh, movement of diaphragm and pen here diaphragm is the instrumental part not our diaphragm we are talking about Dow di downward movement of diaphragm and the pen they move downward which basically gives the downward slope which is inspiration upward slope which is expiration okay this uh, so this one uh, marking this one Uh, waveform is the normal inspiration and expiration so downward is inspiration upward is expiration the second is showing deglutition apnea why because when we inspire and then expire after that after expiration we swallowed something so this is the apnea there is no movement that is called apnea because of the swallowing part drinking or swallowing some water okay 
so this is deglutition apnea this you can see where inspiration is deep and shallow expiration is there this is the coughing okay then fourth one is basically we inspired okay after inspiration we hold our breath so this is breath holding what is this uh, break uh, within these two line this is the break point why because because of breath holding co2 accumulates in our body which basically ultimately stimulate the respiratory centers and again start the breathing movements okay so this is breath holding this you can see this is the hyperventilation which is the voluntary hyperventilation same image you can get might be uh, with low amplitude you can get in exercise also fine even after hyperventilation the co2 volume decreases which inhibit the respiratory center and again there is arrest of breathing apnea because of the low co2 level in our body which is kind of a inhibitory stimulus which inhibits the respiratory centers okay so this way in this practical you can be asked what are these graph and what are meaning of this and obviously the question can come about the uh, the control the neural control of respiration and the chemical control of respiration okay so that's so that's all about stethography so that's all about respiratory practicals and related viva questions thanks for watching